Hi, how's it going? Very good day to everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Cryptonomy channel. In today's video, I want to talk to you about six ways to make money with Agile Liquidity. I want to make some clarifications before we start. Remember that at this moment, since the first or rather since August 1st, I am part of the Agile Liquidity group. I am working with them because I believe in the project, because I have known it since its inception and because I am an early investor. I have known the project since June of last year, and in December I started making videos for my crypto channel on YouTube. In fact, the reason I am working with them is because I believe in the project, because I have known it from early on, and I want to make that completely clear. So, you at home might think that I have interest or that I am being paid to make the video. As such, I am not receiving payment for making the video. But as part of my job, I do consider it very important for a user to have full awareness of how to use liquidity because I see that there is a lot of misinformation, lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, and that's why I make this video. So first, I make this video because I believe in the project. I want to make that clear. Second, I am part of or work for Agile Liquidity, so it is also important to make that very clear, to be very transparent. And third, the main objective of this video is for you to know all the details of how Agile Liquidity works and how you can make the most of it. If you are coming to this channel and this project for the first time, this information is still relevant and super useful, especially in that scenario. But let's say if you are a part of the cryptonomy community and at this moment you have a lot of uncertainty, you don't know what to do with your investment, you are desperate because you put in liquidity and at this moment that liquidity is depreciated, this information is of great value to you. Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe, give us that, like that helps us so much so that the community can continue to grow and this valuable information can reach more people. I hope I don't fall short in the intention and purpose of this video, which is to make you understand everything. I want to tell you that I also made a video, a tutorial video, right? This is the tutorial video. And I also made a PDF, a how-to explaining everything in more detail than I can do in a video because I have to make it as short as possible for you to watch it. But I will leave you this video, video, this complete PDF, so you can access it, read it calmly at home, understand it step by step. And it is on this PDF or this tutorial in PDF that I am making today's video. So, without further ado, let's get into detail so I don't get lost and follow a clear direction. I have also made this presentation and I hope it is as didactic, readable and understandable as possible. If you have any doubts, if you have any questions, you know that through the channel and the Telegram group, I can gladly answer those doubts and concerns. So without further ado, let's get into it. The video is called Six Ways to Make Money with Agile Liquidity, and that's what we're going to see in its development. So first, you need to understand that Agile Liquidity is a decentralized lending protocol that allows users to obtain interest-free loans. Understand this well because I anticipate a question that will come up later, which is why they charge a fee if it's interest-free. Understand that the fee charge is for the contract, the smart contract that has to be created to manage the loan. It's not that a monthly interest is being charged for the loan. These are two very different things, and I hope to make them clear from the start. So, uh, obtaining interest-free loans using HBAR as collateral or as a guarantee requires a minimum collateral ratio of 110%. I will also explain why it is important to consider this minimum collateral ratio and how to avoid having your credit liquidated. 
I will explain this later. It is important to manage an amount above that. These loans are paid or delivered with what I receive after leaving my collateral, which is HBAR. They give me HCHF, which is a stable coin or stable currency, supported, linked, or backed by the Swiss franc, a currency well known for its reliability and strength. The guarantee of the loans is enhanced through a stability fund that contains HCHF, this stable coin, providing a safeguard to maintain the necessary collateral levels. Additionally, the collective backing of the borrowers serves as a comprehensive security mechanism. This Agile Equity Protocol offers novel features that make it one of the most promising projects in the DeFi space to date. It's not because I work here, it's because it really is, and you will see for yourselves. And it offers a variety of innovative improvements for crypto lending. So these definitions are very important for us to keep in mind from here on out so that we can all speak the same language. And you don't get lost among so much terminology and so many abbreviations. So HCHF is a stable coin backed by the Swiss franc. HLQT is the native token of the Agile Equity Protocol. Just like Binance's native token is BNB, Agile Equity's native token is HLQT. HBAR is the native token of the Hedera Hashgraph ecosystem. A trough is like a safe, or if the best definition in Spanish is like having a safe where you take out and maintain your loan, What does that take out and maintain mean? You take out HCHF and leave HBAR as collateral. That's why it's like a safe. I take out HCHF, that is the stable coin backed by the Swiss franc, and leave HBAR as collateral. Each trough is linked to a header a wallet address, whether in the hashtag in Blade or whatever you use as a wallet, but a user can only have one loan linked to that wallet. Each wallet can only have one loan, as we see here. Each address can only have one trough. The troughs maintain two balances, which is why I told you it's like a safe, so you can visualize and understand it perfectly. The first balance, which is the asset, is H bar, which is the guarantee or collateral. And the second value is the debt, which is denominated in HCHF. The other important term to keep in mind is the stability fund. The stability fund of Agile Equity is the mechanism that allows the liquidation process, which is super stable for this protocol. Loan fee, what I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the loan fee is a one-time fee charge as a percentage of the amount borrowed in HCHF and is part of the trough's debt. As I mentioned, this is the cost I pay for the smart contract that is created to establish and create this loan. The fee varies between 0.5% and 5% depending on the volumes of repayments that are active in the protocol determined in HCHF. TVL is the total value locked by its initials in English. Total value locked is the value of HBAR locked as collateral in the system, expressed in HBAR and in HCHF. Truth is the total number of troughs or assets in the system. Here I am showing you what we will see within Agile Equity in the statistics. These are the acronyms that you can see the definition in Spanish by just clicking or moving the mouse pointer over the question mark so you don't get lost. We continue. Supply of HCF is the total of HCHF minted by the H liquidity protocol. Remember that each HCHF is minted when a trough is created and this trough offers a credit. That's when HCHF is being minted. 
HCHF in the Stability Fund is the total of the stablecoin HCHF that is currently held in the Stability Fund, expressed as an amount or fraction of the HCHF supply. HLQT in stake is the number of native tokens of the HLQT protocol that are currently in stake. The total guarantee relationship between the Swiss franc value and the entire system's collateral at the current HBAR price and the system's total debt. Remember that this stablecoin is backed and represented by the Swiss currency, the Swiss franc. Recovery mode is activated when the total collateral ratio, which translates to TCR, as we see here, t Crossand is the total collateral ratio, falls below 150. Use that. This is like a first, an early warning that alerts us that a trough is having a collateral ratio that needs to be reviewed, because if it falls below 110%, that trough can be liquidated. We are going to explain this in a bit more detail. I want you to know the abbreviations and definitions. The price of HBAR is quantified in HCHF. It is calculated against a smart contract, and these prices are being calculated in real time using two oracles, the PIPE network and the Supra. The rollback rate can be between 0 and 100 and is set by the front-end operator who determines the fractions of HLQT that will be paid as rollback to the stability providers using this front-end. And rewards are all the incentives that we will receive in HLQT that accumulate every minute. The, the value on the interface can vary because it only updates when you try to make a new transaction or use the refresh information menu. Remember that sometimes when you log in, this is not refreshed. When you request to review the information, we will see it on the screen. The information refreshes and updates the rewards. You son, now let's get to the most important part of the video. These are the methods to make money using the Agile Equity Protocol. So buckle up because we're going to start. So first, borrow HHF against HBAR. This is the simplest method of the protocol's use cases and is equivalent to taking out a loan in real life. What needs to be done? Create a trough. A trough is where you take out and maintain your loan. Each trough is linked to a single header address, and each address can only have one trough. If you want to have more than one credit, you need to have more than one wallet. The restriction is by wallet, not by person. The trust maintains two balances, an asset, which is HBR as collateral, one liability, which is a debt denominated in HCHF, so let's go straight to the Agile Equity Finance portal to see and understand this a bit better. This way you can understand the topic a bit better. So when we enter Agile Equity Finance, we will see the trough as the first menu. And to understand how a trough is created, the most important thing is that I have the minimum loan that is made in the trough equivalent to 1800 HCHF. So for you to keep in mind, if I have very little H bar, I won't be able to use this trough functionality. The scenario I invite you to consider is you have H bar, you don't know what to do with it, you're not making it profitable. Let's say you only have it in the native staking that HBAR offers, which only offers a 2.5% APR. 
uh, I invite you to review this information because here you will find how to get much more progress from your H bar without selling because what you do is place them here in the trough of 10 chef and see how you can put them to work. So to not get lost, the first method. Method to make money is to open a trough, place my H bar, I will obtain the loan in HHF, HCHF. Here I give you this example so you realize that if I put, for example, 550, 1000 H bar, look that the collateral ratio tells me it's very low. If to obtain this 1812, the idea is to have at this moment, keep in mind that the collateral ratio is at 3 to 10. So for me to become my trough or my credit won't be liquidated, the idea is that you have above a 250% collateral ratio. That's why I placed here hundreds of leg bar. Keep in mind that here you can play 1,000, 1, 2, 3. It already gives you a collateral ratio of 280. If we are already very well, if I put 12 2000, it would be ideal. I'm already over 300. Look, 336 of the collateral ratio or the average collateral for your loan's health to be the most stable or the most adequate. So this is how I can have 1812 HHF of loan by placing 12,000 H bar of collateral to obtain that loan. This way, the health of my credit or my loan will be 336%. We will see why the health topic is so important to not divert attention. So first method, Take your H bar, put it in a trough, obtain HCF, and with just that move, you are already putting your H bar to work. Now, those HCHF, which is the native stable coin, the stable coin represented or backed by the Swiss franc, you can place it in staking here within the stability pool or the stability pool, yes? And here you will obtain 100 using 938% APR for your HLQTs. So this is the best way to use our HBAR, put them to work and be much more efficient. I will continue in order to not get lost. And that's why I made this presentation. And this way you will understand as clearly as possible the six methods to make you send money within a gel equity. Uh, second method is to stake the HCHF you obtained from the trough I just talked about in the stability fund and this way you will obtain this APR keep in mind that it already changed when I made the presentation it was at 93 24% and I already have to update it because here we just saw that it is already 1938% and I made the presentation yesterday Today I'm recording the video. So keep in mind that here it shows us the formula of how this APR is calculated. And the reason it has increased is because the price of HLQ has risen. We will see that too. So it is 109.38%. Excuse me, wait, 109.38%. Let's do it here, live. So the information doesn't remain. This is a presentation and I already turned everything into an image. Sorry, I can't do it here live for you to keep in mind. It is greater 108, 109, 38 percent. Watch out, 109, 38 percent at the time of recording. Uh, the video. So this is the second method of obtaining rewards with Agile Equity as I showed you here. So you take your six bar, open your trough, take this 
HCHF, put them in the stability pool, and you are already generating this 109.38% APR. The HLQT tokens you will obtain by placing your HHF, sorry, the stable coin within the stability pool, you will already obtain rewards. Now you will not only obtain rewards in HLQT, but also in HBAR when there is a liquidation of a trough, you will also receive HBAR, and this gets even more interesting. My suggestion from the point of view, not as an employee or official of Ageliquity, but as an investor, remember that I first knew Ageliquity before working for them. My suggestion and my recommendation is do not sell those HLQs. The best thing we can do with our Ageliquity, and I include myself as an investor, is ESOS EOS to stake them. And I'll explain later in the video why. So let's continue. Method three, stake your HLQT. Do you see why it's important to maintain the error so we don't get lost? That's why buying and staking HLQT is possibly the best way, it's why 1009. To benefit from the HLQT protocol, if you're a big believer, as I think we all are in the crypto community and as early investors, then participants get HLQT tokens by depositing HCHF in the stability pool or by staking our HLQT tokens as we've been doing since they started releasing the NFTs we participated in during the IDO. These tokens provide users with access to additional rewards including a share of the protocol fees. So just by having our HLQT tokens staked we're already earning, and I'll explain why. I urge you not to get rid of those HLQT tokens because you'll regret it later. Believe me, you'll regret it. Method four, we can become liquidity providers within SourceSwap, which is the largest DEX within the header ecosystem with these pools I'm pointing out here. A JBAR against a liquidity has an APR of 15 to 30 percent. We have Acebar against HCHF offering us a 5.32 percent APR. And we have this one, which seems to me a pool that few people are paying attention to, and it's quite interesting for you to look at, which is the stablecoin USDC versus the stablecoin backed by the Swiss franc HCHF with a 62.8 percent APR. Here we already see that there is very low liquidity of $17,000, which is nothing. Here the opportunity to keep growing is super latent and active. Keep in mind that with just $17,000 in liquidity, this is generating only $4 of several ten thousand fees every 24 hours because no one is using it. Here is the opportunity to start using this protocol. It's for everyone for anyone who wants to take it. It's active, current, and real. So this is method four that we see within SourceSwap. You go to SourceSwap, enter the liquidity menu, and you'll find these. Pools to become a liquidity provider. Very quickly, I want to show you the relationship of the stablecoin USDC against the stablecoin HCHF. Look at how it has been growing over the timeline. Here I have it in the total time frame. It has grown by 6.39% the value of HHU sand. Against the stablecoin UDC. Do you realize this is to understand this protocol to the fullest, to make the most of it, and above all, to be patient. I told you from the beginning, this is a medium to long-term project. It's not a project to get rich overnight by putting in $1,000 and taking out $10,000 in a week. You're in the wrong place if you think that's the case. So, let's continue. Method 4, we've already talked about it. 
Method 5, liquidation positions. The system liquidates the positions of under-collateralized debtors. This process occurs when someone liquidates another member's position. The person who clicks the button to complete the liquidation is rewarded with 200 HF. The intention of this is to cover the gas cost you send along with the 0.5% of the ACE bar that was liquidated. This may not sound like much, but if you consider the fact that there are whales with thousands of ACE bar in collateral, it starts to add up and you can liquidate these people. What is this in Spanish? I know many said, but what is that and how does it work? So we come to the Aguiliquity portal and up here you will see a menu called Risky Traps. Enter there and here we start to understand more deeply how our protocol works. First, I haven't talked about the statistics, which is important for you to see. Here is the borrow fee of the loan, the TVL 200, sorry, 215 million HBR are locked. In the protocol, there are 35 drops at the moment. The total supply of HCF is 351,000. In the stability pool, we have 2,000. Total edge liquidity in stake in the protocol, 721 million. The collateral ratio at the moment is 310%. The recovery mode has not been implemented. It hasn't had to be activated. And this is the price of an HBR in Swiss francs. Ready? These are the statistics we have on this front end. So the risky drops or the drops that are at risk, keep in mind that those using these 35 drops are people who do understand the protocol. And we realize, so you can see how they have collateral 2009. Their loans. Look, this is very important and we might go a bit long in the video, but for me, the most important thing is that you fully and absolutely understand how age liquidity works, how you can take advantage of it, and how it's important to understand the mechanisms it uses to benefit from it. So here we see there's the owner, there's the owner's wallet of this trough. Keep in mind that the liquidation menu is not active because they are well collateralized, but in the line, this would be the first one that if the collateralization ratio goes up, this would be the first one I could liquidate. So there are people here keeping an eye on which troughs go into liquidation and liquidate them. For what purpose? To have access to HBAR much cheaper than the price on the market or any DEX, so it's pure utility. And what is liquidating a trough? I pay the debt to the person who had this wallet, for example. Let's suppose the collateralization ratio dropped and this menu was activated. I click here, pay the debt of this wallet and keep the H bar, obtaining them at a price lower than the market price. I could easily take my H bar, go and sell them and get an instant profit. But the trick is to take that H bar, add more H bar, open another trough, and get more HCHF as a loan, and cycle this as many times as I want. I can cycle up to 11 times the amount of H bar I have in my wallet, but only if I manage the collateralization ratio very clearly and take care of the health of my loan. Note that this is very important. Look, for example, this loan has formidable health, all those over 300 that will continue here. We have from 1 to 10. Remember that at this moment we have 35 active troops 
I want you to see the collateralization ratios of all of them look more than 300%. So these are people who understand how the protocol works. They have taken the time to go to the documentation, read it, understand it. Remember that money doesn't go with fools or lucky people. Money goes with people who understand, read, get informed, train, ask, question, review, and understand how to get the most out of their investment and find it this way. So this is how these 35 troughs make us realize, look at the last ones. This last one has the highest collateralization, 430. So you center, when are they going to liquidate that trough? Never. And that's the best use you can give to your HBAR right now, and we will continue to see it in the presentation. So method five liquidation positions, you send. We've already covered it. Sixth, redemption arbitrage. What is redemption arbitrage? First, we need to understand what an exchange is. Well, it's the option the protocol offers to exchange HF for HBAR, that's an exchange or a swap or a trade. The minimum to request an exchange is IT under HF. This is not on a whim, it's because the calculation has been done by the entire age liquidity group for contracts, for everything that involves smart contracts, programming fees, everything. This is the calculation that determined that the protocol is much more efficient. From there upwards, 1800 HHHF. You send that take the debt from the person occupying the first place in the trough, which is what I was explaining here. If I take the first one that let's say had a lower collateralization ratio, here it activates. Keep in mind that here it's telling me that the collateral ratio is not low enough for now. That's why it's inactive use and in gray. If this happens, the average collateralization ratio goes up and this trough becomes active. This little trash can icon lights up and I can pay the debt of this wallet and keep those H bar and use them to request more loans with HEFI cycle again. Why? ready this is what determines method six which is redemption arbitrage so i liquidate the debt or pay the debt of a trough of a wallet i don't care whose it is i simply gave the liquidation option paid the debt kept those H bar, requested a loan again in hchf and cycled again so look at how interesting here we can see this is found within Gecko Terminal. Remember that information hubs like CoinMarketCap charge to list the information of a token. Now that I'm inside age liquidity, I did the process and they charge $5,000 to list the tokens. It's an amount that the age liquidity group considered excessively outrageously expensive to pay just to be published there and it's money better saved for future rewards to all of us within the protocol. So that seemed great to me about the East Liquidity Group from the Swiss Coast company that they don't waste money, they aren't wasting it just to be inside coin market cap, right? Here, the important thing is that the community knows how to access the information, and that's why in this video I share with you that within Gecko Terminal and CoinGecko, it's already there. You can go to CoinGecko, and there it is. You put HAF, there's the Swiss franc, and you put HLQT, and there they are. And they didn't charge us 5000 like CoinMarketCap, which seems absurd and abusive to me to charge all that just to list the information. So if you want to see it, don't go to CoinMarketCap, go to CoinGecko, put HLQT, and there it is. 
Uh, this is the real-time price of HLQT. We can see it has risen 12.8%. Very good news, USAND. And there's the information of the Swiss franc. The stable coin backed by the Swiss franc called HCHF. We already found it within CoinGecko. So magnificent news for you to realize how this works and all the invisible threads that move beneath all these great portals and information hubs that are bloodsuckers charging absurd and exorbitant amounts just to list a token there. So we look at the HLQT pool against HBAR. Here rapid HBAR appears, but it's due to Gecko terminal management issues, but it's HBAR. Look at how interesting this is. The high correlation that HLQ has with HBAR is what makes HLQ a gold mine. And I'm going to explain it to you this way. HBAR has already touched, I think from my humble point of view, its lowest possible value, meaning more than this is very difficult for it to fall now. So, as Monster Boom said in the movie Sing, the only thing left for us when we've fallen so much is that we can't fall any further. The only thing left is to rise. And this is where it gets interesting to have and accumulate HLQT. Because HLQT can easily do 6x the small rise that HBAR has. Meaning, for every rise that HBAR has, the percentage rise that HBAR has will be amplified 6 times in a shell code. So just imagine that as bar reaches its all-time high, is ATH. So let's put it here for you to realize the potential we have with having our native HLQT tokens quietly there in a stake. If I put edge bar here and look at its all-time high, or ATH, which is 0 0.5. Look, 0, the pointer. The mouse doesn't let me get there well, but it's 0 0.5. Look a little more than 0 0.5. So take the price of ALT and multiply it by 6x. And there we will see the potential of maintaining our HLQ. Don't despair, don't sell them, don't give them away or exchange them for HBR. It's the worst deal you can make. We also see the relationship of the Swiss franc with the stablecoin USDC, as I showed you here a moment ago within SaucerSwap. If you realize having HCF over time has been very good. 6 and 39% rise, despite the filthy market conditions we've had. So keep in mind that it is indeed worth it to have HHF against HLQT. Let's realize how the behavior is. So keeping your health good state is the best decision you can make. And we continue here with what I just showed you. Does HL could have, many will say, but aren't you embarrassed to show a 78% drop? No, is that you haven't understood that the entire market has fallen and all altcoins have fallen and they all fall when Bitcoin's dominance rises and Bitcoin's dominance is at its historical highs. But here the important thing is not how much we've fallen, but whether the project has the ability to recover. And in a market rise that has to come at some point, don't think that these drops will be eternal if these drops are not eternal, Yusan. Here the important thing is to understand what project we got into, if it has serious fundamentals, if it has the technical capacity to rise and realize that what fell has to rise at some point. If the project is serious and if the project is stable and if it has technology and usability behind it, so let's realize that when HDMI, LQT starts to rise, when HBR rises, its rise will be extremely amplified to the price of HBR. 
it will be six times. More or less, that's what I have calculated. In proportion to what H bar rises, it will rise more. And we can see that here. If I put H bar and here I put HLQT, so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see it in words and you in facts, sorry. And you there at home can see it, yes, yes. If we place it in H bar to HLQT, the drop is not 78%, 0.66, but it is 60%. But when H bar starts to rise, the proportion of HLQT's rise will be 5 to 6x. I'll leave it there for you to look at. So let's continue with the presentation so we don't get lost here. I'm already lost. Uh, this is the HCHF chart. Keep in mind that if we had only left our H bar in the trough and took out HHF and staked it, look at the utility we would be having. So keep in mind that many times due to ignorance, lack of information or ignorance, we don't use a protocol in the best way to take advantage of it. And we are not taking advantage of it because the amount of H bar in the market is brutal. Where are all those users and holders of H bar who are not taking advantage of their H bar using H liquidity? That's my big question, why thousand nine. Now look at this. If you leave your H bar staked in the native stake within the hashback, you are only getting a two point five percent reward. already and here you see it in my wallet i have a small staking in the ibm node to test this is something you always have to do to understand how things work and here it is showing me the daily rewards this is laughable a 2.5 percent so now i made this small chart for you many times an image speaks more than 1000 words and the numbers are compelling uh, I want to invite you to ask yourself this question. What is the best place to have my hedge bar working for me? So I made this small table in which I show you here an amount of 2,000 ages bar. If you take your 2,000 age bar and put them in the native staking within the hash pack, you will receive a 2.5% apoll, which means you will receive 5 age bar you send. In a year, if you take the same 2000 H bar, go to H liquidity, open a trough, take out your HCHF, stake them, you are using the APR of 104.67%. Look here, if it had the value, it should have changed when I was editing and I didn't realize. 104.67% annual upper yosend, which will generate 209.34 H bar. Where do you want to keep your age bar? That's the big question I ask you. Investor user who has some age bar there doing nothing, not working, put them to work. Remember that financial intelligence is making money work for me instead of me working for money. So ask yourself this question at home and realize that there are very few people, only 35 drops, that means there are only 35 people who are understanding this. That's why I wanted to make this video so that it goes viral and that the whole community comes out to put their sales bar to work. Numbers don't lie. Look at how interesting this is. Taking 100, that's in the H bar. I get a loan of 1870 HHF. The liquidation reserve cost me 20 HHF. The loan fidelity is so much, total debt 1882, the ratio with which I can collateralize my debt is 280%, it would be perfect. Now look at this pearl, which is the most important, which is what I want you to take home. If H bar does a 2x, the debt I have of this HCHF is reduced by half, that is I end up owing 935 HCHF.
But if I say Braga is a 4x in the next bull run, that has to happen, yes or yes. We don't know when, but it happens, it happens. If Braga does a 4x, my debt paid itself. Understand the potential of this, which is what very few people are seeing. That's why I felt the urgency and the need to make this video as clear as possible. And I know I'm going long, let's say 45 minutes, but this is pure gold for those who took the time to watch it. Now look at how interesting here I can, as unfortunately age liquidity is not taken by all portals. I wanted to show you a proportion more or less so you get an idea of saucer swap against Acevar, which more or less have a similar proportion. Look at what saucer can receive. Swap if it reaches H bars all time high. Here it says this portal allows me to show what would happen with this token if it reaches this token's ATH, basically to avoid confusion, to show the price it would have if it had the market capitalization of B. This is A and this is B. So what would happen with HLQT if it reached the market capitalization of H bar? Yusan would be crazy. If this is what happens with SOS, that would go up to 15x. Now imagine how much HLQT could rise. So I leave you with that thought to ponder. To wrap up my final conclusions, native staking of Acebar is not profitable because it will only yield a 2.5% as we had already mentioned. While the minimum collateral ratio is 1.10 during operation, the suggestion is to set your collateral ratio above 250 or at least 200 to ensure your trough is not liquidated. The profits with the stability fund we can earn. I've already explained this, but basically these are the final conclusions so you don't get lost as the troops with low collateral ratios are liquidated. The deposited HCHF is used to pay off debts and users receive HBAR from the liquidated collateral index as a reward. This creates a way to profit from the system's stability. The rewards of the HLQ tokens that each of us receive when depositing HCHF in the stability fund or staking HLQT is the best way to use our HLQTs. Leverage opportunities with H liquidity or AG liquidity that allow users to borrow HCHF based on their HBR value, but with a higher risk of liquidation. This is extremely important to keep in mind. We can cycle our collateral up to 11 times as long as we maintain a collateral ratio above 250% to avoid liquidation. Ready? HLQT is not found on centralized exchanges. The fact that HLQT is solely tied to the price of SBAR constitutes an unparalleled improvement opportunity because its appreciation or depreciation is linked to the performance of Atsebar's price. This is a great advantage. So there's no need to exchange our HLQT for Atsebar. Just holding them is the best way to use them. When the price of Acebar rises, HLQT will rise dramatically, rest assured, when Acebar is increasing in price, even if sales occur. Of HLQT, from those who do not understand this, this caused the price of HLQT against the dollar to rise. Imagine what I was saying a moment ago, when Acebar reaches its RTH, HLQT will easily be a 6x. If you trust Hedera and Ahbar, you should trust HLQT because as we've explained several times in the video, it will also appreciate if held. So in addition to the protocol rewards, the most worthwhile thing to do is to maintain the HLQT stake compared to the native stake of Acebar, the current yield of HLQ within the HL liquidity protocol is much higher. This combined with the very low level of risk and even more so in a bull market that will push Acebar's price to its ATH and the results will be unbeatable.
Atebar is at historical lows. It's very unlikely to fall further from the current level, which results in less risk of liquidation of a trough. So if you open a trough today, you will have less risk of liquidation than those who open the 35 troughs that are already active because the risk of H-bar falling further from its current level is very unlikely. However, one takes precautions and maintains a collateral ratio of 250 and is already ensuring the health of their loan and takes advantage of this. So look at the interesting part, the risk of liquidation of a trough. And this constitutes a huge opportunity because if ASEBAR goes up 2x, the debt you assumed for your trough loan is reduced by half. If ASEBAR does a 4x, your credit is paid off from the current point. Only the option to rise remains. So the only thing we have ahead is pure potential for growth. With this, I conclude and say goodbye. Forgive me for the length, but I wanted this to be as clear as possible. I show you the spreadsheets I made in Google Spreadsheet, so you can see that I'm not making up these figures. I'm taking them directly from the Native Edge Liquidity Protocol. You can make this table at home and realize that this is a reality, that the numbers don't lie. I also show you, I leave the links in the description of Gecko Terminal so you can go there and see it. Remember that within Gecko Terminal and Coinjeco, you can see all the information we just covered in this video. So with this, I say goodbye. See you in the next installment. Have a great day, everyone. Eek.